Now, I put this video out probably about a month ago, and it was called The Moon is Self-Illuminated and Cannot Be Landed Upon. And the reason I showed this video is because it brought a guy to the surface called Planate Veritas, a YouTube channel that no longer makes videos but still has a vast, vast collection of videos that he did. And in some of his videos, what he did is he talked to the people that are actually the managers at NASA of the Hubble telescope, as well as the Sophia telescope, which is a telescope that is on a 767, I believe. It's a big, specially outfitted Boeing that has a telescope on it. And what we basically proved was Hubble isn't real in any way at all. The Sophia telescope is what they use to show us everything that they claim the Hubble gives us. Okay? Everything that we see is not what it appears. This is a picture, this is a video of the moon I took in my own backyard with a Nikon. If this thing was a quarter of a million miles away, how the hell can I zoom in on it so far? Do you see what I'm saying? The moon is drastically smaller than the planet Earth by a lot. Now, I know there's going to be all the NASA fanboys that yell and scream and leave comments, because you do, and I don't care. I'm used to it. NASA has a way bigger budget for trolling other channels than I do, so I deal with it. Now, I'm going to play this video, but I'm not going to play the music, because YouTube will slap me with a copyright, as they usually do. But this is a visual image. This is a video of the SOFIA Flying Telescope. It's the world's largest airborne observatory. It carries a 2.5-meter, 100-inch diameter telescope. Infrared light, invisible to human eyes, is one part of the electromagnetic spectrum that helps astronomers understand the atmosphere. This is a picture of the electromagnetic spectrum as we know it, as we are told. You have to remember, everything that we, we are told is nothing but words. You see what I mean? Nothing but words. Trust your eyes. Trust what you can see. But this guy right here is a graduate student who's done a lot of work on this particular thing. And he's called a lot of people from NASA and caused a big hullabaloo. If you look right here, the blue compares the portion of the infrared light that is blocked from Mauna Kea, one of the highest ground-based observatories at the top. And at the bottom is Sophia. So if you compare these two numbers, you'll see that there's a large discrepancy. This is inside of SOFIA. It's a heavily modified 747 SP, special purpose aircraft. That's what it looks like inside. There's the video games. And this is the creator studio where they do all their editing and photoshopping. Science and engineering workstations were installed in the main cabin and a new rear pressurized bulkhead that's in green was built to create the telescope cavity. That's the lens of the scope. Sophia's telescope assembly was built by the program's German partners. You've got to love those Germans. Ask the Bush family. Ask Prescott Bush. The cavity door is open at altitude and the telescope observes exposed to the stratosphere. Sophia observes at night, but is seen here during a daytime test flight in 2009. Sophia flew for the first time after modica modifications on April 26, 2007. The first light flight was on the night of May 25, 2010. This is Jupiter. This is Jupiter in infrared, taking during the first flight. I've seen the same thing with astronomical binoculars. And this is three Sophia Jupiter images right here. Composed using images. I can't see that word. Europa, Ganymede, Jupiter. Taken during the first flight. These, Im in these images demonstrate the observatory's stability. It's amazing. This is a composite Sophia infrared image of Jupiter's third moons. Composite image of the center of galaxy Messier 82, right there, even bigger, even bigger. These demonstrate Sophia's ability to see through the dust and the entire atmosphere enveloping the Earth. 
So what he's really demonstrating in this video right here is how is it that Sophia can get the exact identical same pictures as Hubble, even though Hubble is allegedly in outer space and Sophia is in very low Earth orbit with an enormous atmosphere of chemtrails and dust and dirt and space particles and all this other stuff. Yet, when he called NASA comparing side-by-side -side pictures of, of the Arctic and outer space, they didn't have answers. And as a matter of fact, Hubble's manager, the guy in charge of the Hubble Space Telescope, had never seen Hubble in his entire life. So he didn't even know if he was actually in charge of something that didn't even exist. This is the Orion Star Formation Complex that was discovered by Sophia's chief science advisor and others in 1967. Detailed structures are revealed in the clouds of star-forming material, as well as heat radiating from newborn stars. The next slide compares the regions of Orion in visible light. Trapezium, BNKL region, BNKL region, trapezium. You guys following? You following? You following? Long, long, long story short, Sophia is Hubble. And that's all there is to it. Sophia takes pictures of outer space better than Hubble can, or at least exactly as well as Hubble can, which makes zero sense because Hubble is allegedly tra traversing the universe. And this is an airplane with a telescope on it. You see what I mean? I think they decided they might as well bring it out right now because who cares? Nobody's paying attention anyways. They've given them enough fluoride, enough medication, enough that nobody's even paying attention. I'll leave links in the description for Planate Veritas's YouTube channel, even though he doesn't put out any new material, but there's still a vast, vast amount of information there. Now, the reason I showed you this video is for this reason right here. According to Hubble, they found a star missing since the Middle Ages. Think about this. Think about what they're claiming right now. They found a star that's been lost since the Middle Ages. Really? Really? It's enough to get NASA and Hubble in the news, but it's nothing that you can actually verify with your own eyes. According to this article, since the 1400s, there was a celestial battle raging in the night sky. A group of stars were fighting for gravitational territory in Orion arm of the Milky Way, which ended in at least three of them being hurtled off into the galaxy without so much of a clue as to where they went. Think of that entire story. Where do they come up with this? Who was keeping track back in the 1400s? Who observed all this happening? Because this is science, right? So it's observable and provable, right? Who observed all this occurring? And how do they know that any of this happened at all? Who had a telescope back in the 1400s? Who was tracking all this? Where is all this information? NASA doesn't care. They think that you're all idiots. And some of us are actually figuring this out. And the people that listen to NASA, the people that got their degrees in science, People that went through college and learned how to memorize and repeat what they were told are the indoctrinated ones, and those are the ones that will come in the comment section right now leaving stupid comments. Sorry, guys. I've been doing this for 40 years, and about two years ago, the light actually came on, and I realized this is all nonsense. Everything you've seen right here, not one of these is an actual picture. It's all artist conceptions because it's all a lie. Everything above us is liquid. I believe it's either helium-4 or helium-5 like fluid that's up there. But stars are not far away suns, and our sun is not far away by any stretch of the imagination. You can see that by simply looking at the sun peeking through the clouds. It ain't that hard. Just real quick, use your own brain. The sun's 93 million miles away, so it's nowhere, It's not even anywhere close to us. And yet, it's showing up this close, and it's kicking out rays in those directions. Yeah, none of it's true. Links will be in the description. Leave your comments below. I'm sure you will. Richie from Boston. I'm out.